my girl Julie from Sports Illustrated broke the story this morning, and it you know the WNBA has fined the New York Liberty half a million dollars. It's a historic fine. It's the highest fine in WNBA history. It actually is down from the initial one million that they were trying to find them for chartering private flights. <laughs> don't know WNBA players unlike the NBA fly commercial and if they want to upgrade their seats they have to go ahead and do that out of pocket so this fine is historic for so many different reasons Christian why, why for I guess we can start there why do you think Renee that WNBA players have to pay for such a an expense out of their own pocket when we see NBA players they, they fly <laughs> charter every every everywhere they go they fly right. charter why why is it different for WNBA players well i guess you everybody's starting to understand now the term CBA collective bargaining agreement sure. agreement that's the answer to all your questions so the answer is if it's why then that means it's not in there but to that point players are supposed to get delta comfort whatever equivalent to delta comfort it would be Players are supposed to, if it's available, the teams are supposed to book that for them. They would, however, have to upgrade if it was a first-class ticket. The answer to all your questions is the CBA. So if you're curious, if people are really like, what's going on with the MLB and a lockout? It's when players want something and the owners maybe don't, or if the league, it's the disagreement on that. But whatever's written in that CBA is set in stone. And so to the point of the fine, What's written in the CBA is that teams are not allowed to fly teams private, and that's what's written in the CBA. So the players agree on the CBA, the 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 ownership and WNBA agrees on the CBA, and that's the problem because it's that's where you're starting to see the differences. Because I don't think anyone doubts that players should have a certain lifestyle. You know, like I'm right. I'm a former player, so I would have loved to fly private to and from games, especially when the schedule gets brutal. We all know that. That's 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 a want that all players would want. You know, me as an owner, I would love that for the players as well. The only problem is it's not in the CBA that you're allowed to do it. That is going to answer all of your questions as to why. I, and I'm sure I, you've been in, real quick, Ashley, I'm sure you've been in some of these meetings, right? You've been in these CBA yeah. negotiating meetings. What, what are those meetings like? And what is it going to take to kind of enact the change in future iterations of the CBA? They're, they're long. You know, I was a part of the executive committee when I was a player and so that's when I was in negotiations they're long there's there's so many different things going on it's it's a long like think of any type of negotiations when you're doing any contract deal but the contract is is for eight years at a time and think oh, about man. all the different I mean because anybody that's dealt with contracts usually it could be a year and you see how <sighs> long it'll take or it's, you know like so imagine a contract that's extending over multiple years how many fine print lines there are how many issues that you're going to fight for how many buckets and so there's so much that goes into a cba that when an agreement doesn't get met like you see with mlb it's almost understandable because there's so many things that need to get changed and so like i said i you know i love the concept of players flying private it's just yeah. not in the cba i love it like it we should i hope we get there at a certain point the problem is that it's, we're not there yet, and so the WNBA is not going to take kindly to somebody just taking matters into their own hands, no matter how much the owners or the players want it. Right. right. And I mean, I think people don't realize how much an athlete's comfort is pivotal to their success. I think when you fly private or when you fly chartered flights, it's a level of comfort, especially on those transcontinental flights. When you're going from one coast to another, it's pivotal to how you can go ahead and perform on the court. But I want to ask you, it's a conversation we see on WNBA Twitter and people are constantly having it. And the WNBA constantly is preaching to invest in the W and they should invest in the W. People should invest in the league. It's a phenomenal league with phenomenal players, but how much of the responsibility is on the W to lead by example and to take care of home before asking somebody else to do it? Yeah, no, I mean, it's there's so many different things. Like, I wish we could fix everything right away. Like, I, you know, like I really, with CBAs and different types of agreements, it really does make it difficult because even, you know, as me being a co-owner and vice president of the Atlanta Dream, there's so many things we want to do. Like, there's so many things that as just an organization that we want to put our players in the best position possible to be comfortable, like you said, to have that lifestyle where they feel like a pro, they feel like they're treated like a pro, everything 
inches to the fact that yes, you are a pro. That's what we want to do here. That's everything. Yeah. Like so, everything that we can do in Atlanta, we're doing it to the max, and that's because that's all we can do. And when it comes to the WNBA, that you know they're their own group. You know, like I that I'm worried about the Atlanta Dream. So that that's what I'm trying. <laughs> you know, like I don't know what's going on with the WNBA and their marketing and different things of that nature because I'm over here trying to worry about what's going on with the Atlanta Dream. But I think we're all under the understanding that everybody wants the WNBA to grow. You know, you want it to grow whether it's from the Atlanta dream. I still want the other teams to do well too. You know, like I still want the other teams to be successful and popping because it builds our brand. And so I don't know, I'm just trying to build it up here on the ground level and I'm gonna let the WNBA take care of the WNBA. Right. And I mean, we we talk about, you know, games and leagues and things like that. You know, the average salary for a WNBA plays around 120,000, which is just an abysmal, abysmally low number. But Athletes Unlimited, you know, they had their inaugural season and it's really changing the landscape of women's sports. It's allowing women not have to go not to have to go overseas yeah. to make a chunk of money and staying home close to their friends close to their family close to and in an environment that they're familiar with how important is this league and have you had a chance to check any of the games out when you know it kicked off well, you know, I worked for for CBS, and so we were actually tossing to a couple of the athletes unlimited games after we were getting off a set because they start later, which I think is dope. Get in where you fit in. I think that how they branded was really smart. They found their their niche in a sense of, all right, we're going to carve out TV time, even if we have to start at 11 p.m. East Coast time, which is only mm. 8 p.m. Uh, in Vegas. So, of course, I caught some games. I mean, like, that's I'm a basketball junkie, so you don't ever need to even ask me if I catch games. <laughs> if, if basketball's on, like, I'll be searching. As soon as I get to the TV, I start to see which games are on and which ones I'm going to put on the TV. So that's I've seen plenty of games. And, you know, the thing that I noticed the most about Athletes Unlimited it's just like me being a hooper. It looked like people were having fun. Like, mm. it's like, you know, right. at a certain point when you're playing and you're playing for your prof profession, you know, like it's tough. It's stressful. You know, you this sports is str a stressful job. People need to realize that it's, it's very stressful. But what I saw at Athletes Unlimited was that like players just look like they was just straight up hooping. And so mm. that that's what I think is the dopest thing about that league. Mm. 